Lonzo on his way to home plate. They're waiting for him. Mother bleeper. I hate when good things happen to any baseball team. I don't like the Mets. I do have a morbid curiosity about Mets Phillies, which we're now going to see in the divisional series. And I would love Mets Dodgers, then Mets Yankees. But when good things happen, and that actually gave me chills because that was the Mets radio network, I just feel sad. And so that's the last thing I saw before I went to bed last night. The first thing I saw when I woke up in the morning is that Terry Francona, who grew up like 25 minutes from here, will be managing the Cincinnati Reds next season. David Bell is one of the worst, if not the worst, managers in baseball. Derek Shelton hasn't had a winning season or even really come close in the last five years. And Terry Francona, a future Hall of Famer, is going to be managing a division rival. This is a football Friday. We will spend 99% of the show on football. But my mind starts spinning, Dorn. And the Fan Morning Show is brought to you by Guardian Protection, your hometown home and business security company. Did the Pirates gauge the interest of Terry Francona before they decided to bring Derek Shelton back? Did they reach out? I hope so. I hope they did their due diligence. But if they did... The answer from Terry Francona was likely no, and I'm not sure which I prefer. I'm not sure if I prefer that they didn't reach out or that if they did, he said, nah, I ain't coming to Pittsburgh. This is a guy who retired and then now just unretired, but retired because of his health. So if you're going to go anywhere, Pittsburgh's closer to Cleveland than Cincinnati is. I don't know where his family is, but I know where he's from. Mm -hmm. Terry Francona should be the manager of the Pirates next year. And he's going to be the Reds manager? Doran talk me off the ledge. I, I, I don't know if I can, man. I don't know if I can. One, I don't think that they reached out. I think that they were sold. They, they were so concrete on bringing back Derek Shelton that they didn't even want to flirt with any other options. I don't think that they reached out at all. And I think that maybe they didn't reach out because they knew that it would be a no. Or they just didn't reach out because that's just kind of how they do things. You know, they're, they're kind of behind on everything. I mean, look how behind they are on a situation like this. They're behind in the trade deadline. They're always behind in everything. So, uh, but if you're a Francona and they did reach out, let's play that game. And you said no. Why do you think he said no? I mean, you got may, arguably maybe a generational pitcher. Absolutely. Um, every, every manager or coach whenever you're embarking on a new situation, and especially like if you're a Bill Belichick and Terry Francona would be in this type of conversation, right? Bill Belichick's only going to go back to a team if they have a quarterback, right? Like next year, like, okay, Bill Belichick's name's going to get popped up. If he does take a job, it's going to be with somebody that has a significant quarterback or has a spot in the draft where they could draft a significant. Right. That's how those coaches, head coaches, and managers align themselves. So if you're Frank Coney, you look at the situation in Pittsburgh, you're like, oh, Paul Skeens. Hmm. Pretty good starting point. Pretty enticing. But would I be able to do the things that I want to do? Well, you know, we could tell you, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I, you know what? I, I, I've played this game before. I know this game better than probably anybody in this whole entire building. Am I going to be able to do the necessary things that I need to do to put a winning club on the table. Am I going to get what I want? No. He knows that. Yep. So why would, why, why would he even entertain this if it were, you know, hypothetically uh, uh, an option? Why would you even entertain it? I wouldn't. You would think that being from these parts, this neck of the woods, that that would help. You can finish out your career in a place where, hey, if you're as good as we think you are and you think you are, you can win. But here's the here's the funny little thing, Tito. If you don't, you're just like the last guy. Yep. You're like the back half of the guy before. You're like all the managers before him. So you're not going to have heart issues because it ain't that stressful. <laughs> I don't know that you pitch it that way. To your point about Skeens, it's not an accident that Jim Harbaugh winds up in a place where you got Justin Herbert. Right. Paul Skeen should be, like, the ultimate selling point. Look at what Detroit's doing. They're going to be up one nothing in every series because you ain't beating Scooble right now. That guy's awesome, and he's not as awesome as Paul Skeen's. 
So they either reached out and he said no, or they didn't reach out. Either way, I feel like crap. This is a dude, Terry Francona, who was the skipper of a franchise that is in a market just like Pittsburgh. People don't show up to their games. Mm -hmm. You look every year, attendance, not great in Cleveland. Mm -mm. Now, they'll spend more money, obviously, but it's a small market. And you know what Terry Francona did in that small market? Oh, nine out of 11 seasons, winning record in Cleveland. Winning record. Small market club, that's really hard to do. This is a two-time World Series champion manager. This is a three-time pennant winning manager. This is a three-time manager of the year. And with all due respect to Derek Shelton, my man's got a 415 winning percentage. He's had five years to turn this ship around, and he ain't. Best he's done is 76 wins. And as you so eloquently stated yesterday, maybe that's the ceiling for one Derek Shelton. I don't know that if Terry Francona were the manager last season, the Pirates make the playoffs. But if Terry Francona were the manager of the Pirates last season, they finish with a winning record. Yeah. And maybe they do make the playoffs. 15-game improvement for a manager... Seems like a lot to me, but five or six games, seven or eight games. And if you're going to build a roster next year, if you're Ben Sherrington, that you think can win 84 games, well, a five-win bump off of 84 makes a huge difference and could get you into the playoffs. He doesn't have the budget, Ben Sherrington, and he hasn't done a good enough job with the budget that he's got to build a 90-win team. I just ain't buying it. His press conference the other day, he's talking about well, a lot of this is going to have to be internal improvement. And that's what we heard last offseason right. going into last year. Internal improvement ain't going to happen with Derek Shelton. Internal improvement could happen with Terry Francona. Again, the best you can hope to buy this offseason, IMO, is like eight or nine more wins. And then you need your manager to get the most out of what you got. And Terry Francona can do that. The current guy has shown no ability to do that. And not not only is he back in baseball, man, but he goes to the Reds. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the mirror and you're the Pirates, what do you see staring back at you? It should be the Reds. Should be the Reds. They won 77 games this year. Last season, Pirates come out to this hot start. The Reds not so much. Reds get hot in the middle. Both teams very similar. Young teams. Good starting pitching. They both got a cruise. Yep. <laughs> who, who are electric players. And one team seems to be taking this seriously, the Reds. What we've done the last two years, not acceptable. The Pirates? Nope, status quo is good enough. And I heard Jason Mackey on yesterday with the PM team, scathing criticism of ownership here, where he said his words, not mine. <laughs> They're okay with the mediocrity. Because you know what happened this year, man? A lot more butts were in the seats. Because of Paul Skeen. Of course. So they're going to make more money this year of course. than they made last year. They're okay with the mediocrity. The Reds, not. The Pirates, settled. The Reds didn't. So there's our answer. They're okay with mediocrity, and they didn't reach out. It's like seeing a hot chick at the bar. And just saying, you know what, we're not going to get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Man. I conflated the analogy with the real life. It's like seeing a hot chick at the bar and going, you know what, I'm not even going to talk to her. I'm just going to assume defeat. The Reds went and talked. Mm -hmm. Bought a couple cocktails. Mm -hmm. Things got loosey-goosey. Yes. They wound up going back home with Terry Francona. It's very frustrating. It's a football Friday, but needed to get all that off my chest, our collective chests. How do you feel about this, Pirates fans? 412-928-9370. We knew the Reds fired their manager. They could have hired anybody else, and I think I'd been okay with it. My hope was that Terry Francona was going to stay retired, but that he joins the Reds. In division, the local area ish. It hurts, man. <laughs> hurts. Maybe if Ron Cook were still here, he'd have come. They buddies? Oh yeah. 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 Ron, Ron Cook was buddies with everybody. He was, man. So Cookie, you could tell which guests Ron booked versus Starkey, because Starkey, you know, he quarterbacks the show. He's gonna bring you in, he's gonna get you out sometimes after like forty five minutes. When it was a guest that Cookie booked. Hey there, Tito. <laughs> Starkey's about, like, turns his mic on. 
Gets all nestled up, about to start the same. Hey there, Tito, how you doing? How you doing? He would jump the order of operations there because they're buds. Nine out of 11 years winning record mm. in Cleveland. It's a shame. Uh, make a call. Mm, probably didn't. 